can't be filled with the Spirit and have unconfessed sin. And uh, I hear myself. Well, um, verse 18 says, Be filled with the Spirit. We see uh, number two, this is commandment. Being filled with the Spirit is not an optional accessory for the Christian life. The Christian is to have God's power in his life. Morning, Jonathan. Good to see you. Morning, Rudy. Being filled with the Spirit's not an option. Uh, Jay, do we have extras? Uh, I do. Just one sitting. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Being filled with the Spirit's not an extra option. It. Uh, we as believers need to have God's power in our lives. It can't be something which uh, is... Hmm? Ephesians chapter 5, Rudy. We're in Ephesians 5, verse 18. Being filled with God's power isn't something which is optional for a Christian's life, but it's not something which is automatic either. Good is never automatic. This is something you can write down and you can remember. Good is never automatic. Good stuff doesn't just happen by accident. Evil is automatic. Evil happens by accident, but good doesn't. If there's something good, it's because someone tried to make it that way. If things are going well in your life it's um, and truly are going well spiritually, it's a result of you surrendering to the Lord and walking God's way. Um, if we just expect things to go well without our putting any efforts toward them, they won't go well, and that's true for anything. Tests I don't didn't study for back when I was in college really didn't go as well as they should have. Projects I decided to write an hour before never did as well as the projects I started writing the night before. I never got beyond that. But the night before was doing pretty good. Well, sometimes I did, but not often. It's not how you're supposed to do college. You're supposed, to, Mendy, when you get to college, start your projects way before the night before. Don't do as Mr. Chris did. Um, sometimes they'd start them before that. But the more effort you put into something, the better it'll do. Being filled with the Spirit doesn't come by accident. We have to put time and effort into knowing God and the walking in God's power. Being, controlled, being filled with the Spirit requires that we are controlled by no other force than God's Spirit. That means we don't have addictions in our lives. It means we don't have stubborn sins. It means we need to get rid of the things which control us, which uh, demand our life be its instead of God's. And being uh, number four, Spirit-filled believers act God's way in difficult family situations. Are there difficult family situations? Sure enough. Do Christians have a hard time in their families sometimes? Sure. Do good Christian families sometimes have serious problems happen? Sure. Oh yeah, sure. Sure enough. But when we're walking in the Holy Spirit's power, this helps us to overcome those hard family situations. This helps us to uh, be able to get along with people who are really hard to get along with. The Bible says great things like a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Um, there's all kinds of wonderful things in the book of Proverbs about how to get along with each other. And sometimes some family members just aren't gettable along with, if you will. But if we're filled with the Spirit's power, we won't react in wrath and anger to them. We'll react in love. Submitting one to another. 521, Sammy. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. We find another commandment here predicating uh, the family situation is submitting one to another in the fear of God. First, we saw that we're to be followers of God walking in love. Second, we saw we we're supposed to be filled with the Spirit Third, we see that we're supposed to be submitting one to another. This submitting one to another, under this we'll see wives submit to your husbands, husbands love your wives, but submitting one to another is key in a family. It really is. A family is a team, if you will. It's uh, not a one-man show. It's not a one-husband show. It's not a wife leading the boat show. It's not a kids leading the boat show. It's a team. By the way, the parents are in charge of the kids. The kids who run a house is a disastrous house. But it's a team. It's not a uh, one-man show. And submitting one to another is, 
it's really critical to this. Chuck. And uh, that verse, submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And then verse 22 says, wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. How do you reconcile those two? Well, it's very simply this. The husband's in charge. He submits himself to God, as we'll see later. The wife submits herself to the husband. The husband's in charge, but the husband better be real careful not to trample over his wife's wishes, not to overrun his wife, not to not to run ragged over the family. Yes? Um, I believe there are times where the husband does submit to the wife's wishes. You know, there's Obviously, there are times for that. And uh, I know some of the things I've learned in our family is that God has given a wife care of the home. Doesn't mean that the husband's not over the home, but her special ministry is going to be making a home and guiding the children. And uh, I find myself many times submitting to Susan's desire on how to run things in the home and how to deal with the children. Um, and occasionally I might override it and say, no, I think we should do it this way. But for the most part, you know, I find there's times to submit, you know, especially in that type of area, as an example. If I can give an example from my own personal experience, not as a husband, but as a child observing, or as a person observing, when uh, husbands listen to their wives about uh, traffic directions, it does tend to turn out well. <laughs> not, not in all cases, but often. Um, anyway... But uh, let's think about things in humility. Let's let submission. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh um, a lot of times, a, a wife has insights that a husband doesn't have, particularly into people's emotions and how they feel. It's also true. Uh, why a woman sees things totally differently than a man does, and uh, a man who ignores what his wife sees and thinks is a man who is headed for disaster. Well. Let's think of it this way. It says, submitting yourselves one to another, and the key behind submitting is humility. If you're going to be submitting, you have to be humble. When you submit, you humble yourself, you go under something, and we're all to walk in humility. This is something every believer needs to have is humility, not pride. Pride says, my way. Humility says, well, why can't it be their way instead? It doesn't hurt me. Why can't it be their way? It doesn't hurt God's work. Why can't it be their way? Why does it have to be my way? Humility gives. Pride wants to take. Humility serves. Pride wants to be served. And uh, a proud family member is a bad one. The humble family member submits one to another, and things go great when people submit one to another. They really do. When people fight with each other and... They're walking in pride. Things are rough and ragged. Um, submitting one to another is a result of walking in love and being spirit-filled. That's number one there. Submitting one to another is for all family members, and uh, these three factors are key for right family relationships.